Alright, I am doing a follow-up video. So, uh, hi, I'm the guy whose name is all the way over there. This is why I don't ever do, <coughs> do intros, because my name is right there. That's the purpose of that logo. I don't know why. I'm just very tired. It's probably because I just got up. Um, I was looking at the comments of my last video, and Mr. The Mad Tinkerer put a little comment out if I could click it. Eh, let me freaking... Eh. I don't want to comment. I already did comment. YouTube, cooperate. There we go. So, Mr. Mad Tinkerer or Mrs., I don't know, said, I was able to follow along with what you're saying, but I think the actual content in this video would be, make a better blog post. be better if I could read them and not just hear what you read it all out. Maybe make a follow-up video explaining the difference between a register and a bank and a, st a stack for all the viewers who don't know that already. Which I kind of agreed, but also said my blog is a mess. It, it is a mess. And I'll show you why it's a mess. I will show you why it is a mess. Right? Alright, I'm going to show you why my blog's a mess. Right here. Right here. It's freaking... FORBIDDEN! It just don't work. Now, I'm actually going to set it back. Well, whatever. That's that. But, here's the thing, I can open it on my phone. So, if I go to my phone and I go to go to WP Admin, I can't remember my freaking password, as always, this is what Firefox is for. <laughs> Copy that. Paste that in. Then that. Just delete all that. Play done. Go back to login and passwords. Then copy password. And then paste that in. Hit remember me, log in. And there are updates available for the pro following plugins. It might be the plugins and making it all uh, freaking crappy and all that, but I have to have them for the freaking, uh, eh. Whatever, just select all update plugins. So yeah, I can access it on my phone. The problem is, if I try to up do a post, because the second I hit post, the entire website goes... <laughs> that's basically what happens. That's just everything that happens. Just... Just... <laughs> just don't happen. It just... I need to replace WordPress. But anyways... Now, on to... LibreOffice, so I can open up. Uh, no, that, that the spreadsheet of madness, <laughs> and then I'm also gonna open up Sublime Text, so I can, so I can say stuff, I guess. So here you go. So, so first things first. Hello. So I'm gonna go. All right. So I guess first thing we gotta do is explain registers, banks, stacks, all that stuff. Now stacks, I I know somebody else can uh, 
and in fact, I know somebody else can explain it. It's ret it, go to. You ever heard of Retro Game Me Mechanic Explained? He has a video all about the stack. So go watch that if you want to know how the stack works. As for registers, those are basically little buckets, little buckets of uh, of memory that the processor uses to do stuff. So just think about it like. So like the registers are the stuff you're like immediately working with, and then, and then like uh, RAM, which is the you know, little dims on your motherboard, or you know if you're using a laptop, just the stuff that's in there might be on a dim. I don't know, but the RAM would be like your short-term memory. If you're like you're not using it right now, but you do need it, and then like a, your hard drive or like a NAND flash, that would be. Uh, that would be basically, if I can think, that would be your long-term memory. Now, for me, whoever made whoever made my brain gave me some very crappy dims because they're super slow, and they have some. And pr they probably have some horrible latency because I can never think. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So, so register. It's basically just. Immediate working memory, stuff you're working with right now. Now, let's explain how the freaking memory map works. Because there's basically three things. Basically, three things. Three things. Three things. Like, because the, the memory map, like, there's, like, the addresses for the memory. There's three bytes. One of the bytes represents the exact byte that you're going that you're looking for in the memory. So you now let's write out like the memory address, basically byte one, then byte two, then byte three. Or it might be more accurate to do it like this because binary. <laughs> Actually that'd be that'd be tertinary. Whatever. Hexadecimal, there we go. Okay. The we're assuming a little endian. So the first byte you come across in the address, that is the offset byte. That's basically saying the exact byte that you're looking for. Byte one indicates the page, which is basically a group of 256 bytes. And why 256? Because the offset byte is one byte, and one byte can store values from 0 to 255. Therefore, a page has 256 bytes in it. So, byte 1 is the page byte. Then byte 2 is the bank byte. And the bank is, you know, similarly, it contains 256 pages. And then the entire memory map is 256 pages. Banks, and that's how you get 16 megabytes. And I actually have like little like things over here. Oh, by the way, the reason why it says port page over here, that's because the port it only uses 16 bit um, addressing. So, yeah, I'm still kind of trying to figure out everything, but yeah, this right here, this is basically like all 256 banks that are in the memory map and then you can imagine that just the port pages over here that's just you know one of these let's say that one that's all of this it's not actually what it is but whatever we can pretend finally we should probably go over the exact registers we have basically like all the registers we have these are our general purpose registers. We mainly have eight of them. Eight 16 bit general purpose registers. However, these four registers here can be split into a high byte register and a low byte register. That's what these are. And those are all the general purpose registers, that's where you can store stuff. Afterwards we have some registers that actually have a purpose that I designed, <laughs> or will design. 
so you got the stack pointer here, which takes a page, which has a page byte and a byte byte. <laughs> Should probably set that to offset, just to get the. Uh, I'll do, do there right there. Anyways, so we got the page pointer byte, and then we got the offset pointer byte. That's what it can be split up into. Then you get the program counter. By the way, stack pointer, it works how it would usually go. I remember in the uh, in the stack video by RGMX, it was there's basically two ways to go. It could either be a ascending or descending, and or it could be an empty stack or a full stack. It depends on what convention you use. And there's also uh, Kali pre preservation and caller preservation. I'm gonna pause the recording so I can go like you know warm. All right, just reminded myself of uh, just reminded myself of what the uh, freaking stack pointer like all that crap. You should really go watch that RGMX video in order to understand what I just watched. But um, basically, they basically there's the full stack convention, which basically means that the stack pointer points to the first byte that is in the stack. Then there is the empty stack convention where the stack pointer points to the first byte that is not in the stack. So, two different ways of doing things. There's also ascending versus descending. I still don't really understand that. I'm going to do full stack convention because I'm a full stack kind of guy. <laughs> Might be him down now. I just assumed that I'm a full stack kind of guy. Yeah, so that's how the stack pointer works. It, for, it points to the first byte that is in the stack. And then I don't, I'm still trying to figure out whether it will be an ascending or a descending stack. And I'm going to have to freaking rewind the freaking video just to. Right. There's just like a little, little part of the video that just kind of. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. So if I remember correctly, an ascending stack is where frick I forgot I'm gonna have to freaking listen to it again give me a sec just watch like a few seconds of the video <laughs> and um the difference between ascending and descending stack basically with the ascending stack it increases the pointer when it's pushed and decreases when it's popped while the descending stack is the other way around it in it decreases when it's pushed and increases when it's popped. <coughs> it's burped. I had donuts. Anyway, um, yeah, that's basically how the how the stack works. Congratulations, I just summed up. Oh, actually, no, there's still a bit more in that video, so go watch that video. I'm gonna see if I can put a freaking eye card up there. And this thing is not is not up. It's not centered. There we go. There we go. But yeah, go, go watch, go watch this video. Go watch it. Go watch it. Spy Retro Game Mechanics Explained. It's one of those videos. Just go look up the Stack Explained RGMX. That's all you gotta look up. But yeah, that's basically the stack. And then Program Counter. That's the thing that counts the instructions. As you can probably tell, it basically says, like, this is the instruction that we are currently on. And it gets incremented, or it can be, like, modified by the control flow instructions. So that's basically just the program counter. And it has, you know, bank, page, and offset. And then... Down here we have the flags register, half carry, carry, zero, negative, overflow, then the hardware maskable interrupt, interrupt level, maskable hardware and, hard, hardware and software interrupt enable, it, so it's on one by default, and that basically means they're not masked, they're enabled, but setting it to zero masks them and disables them because that's what the mask does. And then there's the trap, where if you set that, it means that you can single step the processor. 
And then there's direction, which influences how, uh, like, stuff happens. I, uh, I just got that from the freaking x86 flags for certain. I still don't know what it does. <laughs> uh, and then there's a bunch of reserved ones because I'm not done. But yeah, that's, um, that's that. That's, that's, you know, the, oh, and, uh. Yeah, there, there's this thing. The interrupt vector, uh, basically, basically these point to where the handlers for the different interrupts, you know, are. And whenever it, ha whenever an interrupt happens, it goes to the, goes to the uh, addresses where the vectors are, reads the vector, and then jumps to where the vector says to go, and, you know, it's going to be like, okay, there should be a interrupt handler here, so I'm just going to run this as if it's code. It basically just screws with the program counter. It all, but whenever an interrupt happens, it pushes where, like, the current program counter onto the stack. That's pretty much how interrupts and subroutines work. It just pushes the last address onto the stack, and then, when it, then whenever it returns, it takes it off the stack and goes back there. Also, I just got a freaking notification from uh, subreddit. Ah, r slash micronations. Yeah. Right. I don't really know what else to talk about, so I don't know. Leave, leave your questions in the uh, comments. And, um... Yeah, I'll be back to you. Bye. Bye. Have an awesome day. I can make very weird noises with my mouth. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I don't even know why I'm just freaking demonstrating it. <laughs> I'm just going to end this video. You have an awesome day. Bye.